Hello and welcome everyone. I'm excited to have you join us today on our channel. If you're gearing up for the LMSW or LCSW exams, you're in the right place. I'm here to guide you through understanding the different types of questions you might encounter on these crucial exams. Understanding the structure and variety of questions can significantly boost your confidence and improve your test-taking strategy. Today, we'll dive into a real-life case study session that will not only provide you with a deeper insight into typical exam content but also help you master the skills to approach these questions effectively. We'll explore a dialogue between a social worker and a client, focusing on identifying symptoms, intervention techniques, and much more. Whether you're a first-time test taker or returning for another attempt, this session is designed to enhance your understanding and sharpen your skills. Let's get started and unlock the strategies to succeed in your exam. Good afternoon Deborah. it's good to see you again. How have you been feeling this past week? I start thinking that everyone dislikes me, and I start feeling really small and vulnerable. I end up keeping to myself even more. That sounds quite distressing. Let's try an exercise where we examine these thoughts a little more. Can you tell me about a specific instance when you felt this way? Well, at work last week, I heard my colleagues laughing in the break room. Immediately, I felt they were laughing about me. It ruined my entire day. I couldn't concentrate on my work at all. I see. When you have these thoughts, how do you usually react internally? What goes through your mind? It's been the usual. I keep feeling like people are judging me, and it's overwhelming. Sometimes, I think they're all out to get me or make me feel incompetent. Let's try to look at the evidence together. What evidence supports the thought that your colleagues were laughing at you? And what evidence might there be against that thought? I, I don't really know if they were laughing at me. I didn't actually hear them say anything about me. Maybe they were laughing about something else. That's a very good point. It's important to consider all possibilities. How might things change for you if you thought they were laughing about something else entirely? I guess I'd feel less stressed and more focused on my work. I wouldn't feel so upset all day. That's a valuable insight. Reflecting on different perspectives can help us control how we react emotionally. Let's continue practicing this for any similar situations. How does that sound? It sounds helpful. I think it could make my days easier. Now, it's time to test your knowledge with the multiple choice questions. Remember, understanding the different variants of questions is crucial for anyone preparing for the social work licensing exam. If you need more resources and support, don't forget to visit our website at gilbertmbell.com. We offer study sessions, practice exams, and more to help you succeed. Now let's begin. What specific symptom did the client mention during the session? A. Fear of abandonment. B. Belief that others are judging or out to harm them. C. Impulsive behaviors. D. Sudden mood swings. Answer. B. Belief that others are judging or out to harm them. The client expressed feelings of being judged and persecuted by colleagues, a symptom related to paranoid thoughts, which can be associated with certain personality disorders. Which cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, technique did the social worker use during the session to address the client's irrational thoughts? A. Exposure therapy. B. Behavioral activation. C. Cognitive restructuring. D. Relaxation training. Answer. C. Cognitive restructuring. The social worker employed cognitive restructuring by challenging the client to examine the evidence supporting and opposing their beliefs, a common CBT technique used to address distorted thinking. Why is it beneficial for the client to consider evidence for and against their thoughts in the context of CBT? A. It helps build better social relationships by promoting trust. B. It decreases dependence on the therapist by teaching self-coping strategies. C. It helps identify and modify distorted thinking patterns, leading to improved emotional regulation. D. It increases the client's knowledge about different psychological theories. Answer. C. It helps identify and modify distorted thinking patterns, leading to improved emotional regulation. 
By evaluating the validity of their thoughts, clients can start to identify and change irrational or distorted thought patterns, which is a fundamental goal in CBT to help improve overall emotional well-being. In the provided case session, the social worker intervened without explicitly naming the therapy method. What is the primary reason for this approach during a therapeutic session? A. To maintain a natural flow in the conversation without overwhelming the client with technical terms. B. To test the client's knowledge of psychological therapies. C. To comply with legal requirements concerning therapy disclosure. D. To focus solely on the social worker's understanding of therapy techniques. Answer. A. To maintain a natural flow in the conversation without overwhelming the client with technical terms. By not explicitly naming the therapy method, the social worker aims to keep a session client centered and maintain a natural conversational flow. This approach can help the client feel more at ease and less overwhelmed by technical jargon, fostering a better therapeutic relationship and enhancing the effectiveness of the intervention. Considering the use of cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, in the session, what underlying principle of CBT is demonstrated when challenging the client's thoughts about co-workers judging them? A. The principle of unconditional positive regard. B. The principle of cognitive restructuring to challenge and alter distorted thinking. C. The principle of exposure therapy. D. The principle of active listening. Answer. B. The principle of cognitive restructuring to challenge and alter distorted thinking. Cognitive restructuring is a core component of CBT that involves identifying, challenging, and modifying distorted thoughts, beliefs, and attitudes. In the session, the social worker guides the client to question and reconsider their automatic thoughts about coworkers, which is a direct application of cognitive restructuring. What potential outcome could result from the social worker's method of challenging the client's perceptions during the session, based on CBT principles? A. Increased dependency on the social worker for decision-making. B. Improved self-awareness and decreased paranoia about social interactions. C. Reduced effectiveness of therapy due to client resistance. D. Unchanged client behavior and perception due to lack of medication. Answer. B. Improved self-awareness and decreased paranoia about social interactions. By utilizing CBT techniques to challenge irrational thoughts and perceptions, the social worker helps the client increase self-awareness and potentially reduce feelings of paranoia or misinterpretation of social cues. This process encourages the client to develop healthier thought patterns and more realistic perceptions of interactions with others. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this session provided you with valuable insights and practical approaches to tackle the LMSW and LCSW exams confidently. Remember, understanding the types of questions and the underlying principles can make a huge difference in your performance. Join us for a study session to enhance your exam preparation. Click the link in the description to register. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful, subscribe to our channel for more updates, and hit the bell icon so you never miss out on new content. We are here to support you on your journey to becoming a licensed social worker. Good luck, and see you in the next video.